All right, a lot of filter hype. So let's compare the FKF versus the BQRC filter versus the Buttersworth filter versus the classic PT1 filter. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at butterfly filter of the FKF versus the BQRC F2. And the Butterfly has two versions of the FKF in it. It has a fixed K version and then it has the default uh, FKF. We're not looking at the fixed K version. We're just looking at the default FKF and comparing it against the Butterfly BQRC F2 filter. From there, we are going to make a jump and to go to beta flight and we're going to make an assumption that the BQRC F2 filter in Butterflight is the exact same filter that's in Betaflight. As far as I'm aware, the Butterflight guys didn't change the filter at all, and I know the Betaflight guys didn't. Once we go into Betaflight, and we're going to look at those logs as well, we're going to show that the BQRC F2 filter produces the same result as the FKF filter in Betaflight, which produces the same result as the Buttersworth filter, which produces the same result as the classic PT1. If you're not familiar with the Buttersworth filter, uh, it was in test trials uh, for the last couple months in the Betaflight 3.4 release. It actually got removed because of all these findings that, hey, all these filters are just producing the same result as a classic PT1. So, um, per, you know, adding all kinds of code that produces the same result just confuses people. Why, why would we do that? The important thing to note, and I'm going to drop a link down below where you can download all the logs, you can download even flight videos, you can download the dumps, you can download the plasma tree images, all that good stuff. So all the data is going to be there so you can look at it yourself. And the important thing to me is all the PIDs need to be the same. So Betaflight default PIDs are not the same as Butterflight default PIDs. Um, there's some test PIDs out there for Betaflight 3.4, that's the PIDs I used for all this testing. I don't think it matters so much uh, what the PIDs are. I'm not trying to compare prop wash against prop wash. I'm trying to compare filtering. So the PIDs, as long as they're the same, and as long as all the rates are the same, and all the you know cutoffs are the same, and all that good stuff, as long as that's all the same, we're all good. If you are looking at my data and you notice anything is not the same, please let me know. The other thing uh, that's noteworthy is, you know, we have to drive a Q&R for the Butterfly FKF for setting the cutoff. In that testing, we're running an 8K gyro and PID loop, so my Q&R was 1080 and 88. That set a cutoff around 300. You can see it's 299.5. You know, why is that important? Because then when we switch over to the BQRC F2 filter in Butterflight, we have to tell it what the cutoff is. So in that flight, we're telling it 300 instead of 299.5. To say a filter is better than another filter, you need to have a dramatic difference in the data that you would see in a black box log, not just, oh, that slightly moved up by some minuscule amount. It's not going to make a difference in your flight performance or or PIDs or anything like that. So again, when you're looking at this, you know, obviously it's different flights. So we are, you know, getting actual real data. It's not the exact same flight. Some might say, well, you should, you know, do it with two flight controllers on the same rig. It's like, well, they can't be at the exact same spot. They're going to pick up different vibrations. So that's not the answer. The answer is to, you know, do two different flights on the same exact setup, um, just different software settings and then try to do similar flight moves and most importantly is to try to have logs that are the, in similar length. Other details, uh, like I said, same log time back-to-back -back flight so you're not doing one one day and then compare that against the log for another day and one day it might be windy and the next day it might not be. So that kind of thing. Okay, so here's some of the information. At 8K, we're looking at the Butterfly FKF versus the Butterfly BQRC F2. What I did is I threw that in the plasma tree. And plasma tree has a great filter and noise analyzer. If you haven't checked that out, I'll drop a link below to the plasma tree video I did, and you can download that. 
that doesn't show the noise analyzer. Uh, that was a new feature added in the last, I guess, week or so. But check it out. So what are we looking at here? Uh, looking at this, you know, honestly, I've had to bring these images in multiple times because I kept forgetting which was which. Um, this is the FKF. This is the BQRCF2. Again, link below. You can download them. They're labeled. You can look at the log. You can run the log yourself in your own plasma tree. Go ahead. And you can see, uh, you know, just a description of what this graph is showing. The raw noise that the gyro is seeing is right here on both. So that's, that's what this column is. Roll, pitch, yaw, and this is the raw noise. Yellow is noise, blue is no noise. So you can see this is actually the motor noise, uh, motor vibrations. This is down low. This is basically the mid-throttle oscillations. And then this is up high at 100% throttle. Uh, you can't really see it here, but it's 0 to 100% throttle, and then you can see that's where that vibration. So I got vibrations going between 200 hertz up to 400 hertz, depending on where my I'm ramping the throttle at. This shows you where throttle percentage-wise is on you know during the flight, and then this shows you you know the spikes in throttle going up and down throughout the flight as well. This is the filtering, uh, the gyro filtering of the deep you know the the raw data so this is you know all the essentially this is the fkf filtering uh, or the bqrc filtering acting here and then this is the uh, d term what the d term seeing noise wide over here you can see the raw noise in a in a graph and then you can see uh, and this is really interesting the transmission in percentage of the raw noise going through to the d term that's what this line represents. This, you can see it's, it's essentially how much is coming in and how much is going out. And those transmissions between the two, you know, this is 20 here, look at 20 here. Now don't let the grid lines throw you off, but 20 through here, the transmission lines are very similar. Y you know, people might say, well, they're not exactly the same. And it's like, listen, we're, again, we're not splitting the atom. They're different flights. That's why they're not exactly the same. Uh, and 1% differences in filters, or we can go to five, I guess, is not a breakthrough. It's the same thing, essentially. So let's, let's look at the actual log for that as well. Okay, so here's the actual log. So the first one we're actually looking at here is the FKF. And we can pull up the spectrograph on it. You can see this is the raw noise profile and then this is the gyro after filtering. So let's just look at raw noise versus raw noise. This second log here is the BQRCF2. So I can kind of just do the whole flip back and forth between the two. And you can see the raw noise is not perfectly identical, but it's pretty close to the same thing. Uh, the, and so the difference is we shouldn't expect then perfectly identical uh, gyro filtering out the other side. We have to kind of take that into account. If the raw noise is a little lower on the one versus the other, well then the filtered data should be a little lower on the one versus the other, so on and so forth. But you can see amplitude is essentially the same on both. It's just the profile itself, you know, where it's where the noise is acting is a little different. And that has to deal with how much time I spent in throttle. You saw before this is kind of the mid-throttle oscillations. This is the peak throttle oscillations. So it really varied how much, you know, during the flight I had throttle at this level or this level kind of a thing. Now let's do the gyro and look at that. So for this we turned up the spectrograph uh, amplitude so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And you can flip back and forth between the two here as well, and you can see. And honestly, if I had to argue one way or another, it looked like the BQRC was slightly better. But I'm not going to go that route. It probably falls within the probability of error here. So we're going to say they're the same thing. Secondarily, let's look at the actual data. So we're in a spot where 100% throttle, we have the raw data in the background, the raw gyro noise, and then the filter gyro noise before it. If you're looking at it yourself, make sure to turn smoothing off in black box. 
So let's just flip between those two and you can see how it is attenuating those vibrations as essentially the same thing. You know, it's, it's still wiggling up and down uh, to try to, you know, the red lines are the raw noise and then this is the filter gyro trace. And I don't see a big difference between the two. So, so with all of that, I conclude that the butter flight FKF is equivalent to the Butterflight BQRCF2. Now we're going to make the jump to Betaflight. And we're going to have that assumption that the Butterflight BQRCF2 is the same exact code as the Betaflight one. And now we're going to drive home that the all the filtering, the BQRC, the FKF, the Buttersworth one, all that filtering in the last round is essentially the same attenuation and phase delay as the classic PT1. Here are two graphs at 32K showing BQRC, PT1. You can look at it yourself. Here's the raw. Uh, it's so much more yellow because it's 32K versus 8K. Here's the filtered. Here's the D-term. Here's the transmission percentage, so on and so forth. And you can see uh, you can't hardly tell the difference between the two graphs. Next slide here is the Betaflight PT1 filter versus the Betaflight FKF filter. Again, same thing for noise attenuation. A little bit noise, on, a little bit less noise on raw noise on this one than there was on this one. So then you'd expect to see those same, you know, that same dimness carry through. You can check out the logs. I'm not going to go through all the little details on, on this one as well. Ultimately, if you plot the FKF, the PT1 uh, filters uh, mathematically using MATLAB or Octave, the maths show that the attenuation, which is this, and the phase delay line up, the red line, blue line, right on top of each other. And that is why Betaflight decided to repurpose code within Betaflight to simulate the FKF because it was already there and you know it was always it was producing the same results so that's what they did. Now we have test data showing the exact same thing. So these are some claims I've seen out there that I don't see a basis for. The FKF is not a low pass filter. I have not seen any data to show otherwise mathematically on the chart I just showed and then in real life results producing the same thing as what is um, undeniably a low pass filter which is the PT1. Uh, again open to data that shows otherwise but that data needs to be scientific data. The FKF is dynamic. Uh, Q and R is dynamic. Again I have not seen anything to show it's dynamic. Actually there's unit tests showing that they converge on a constant K, just like the one in Betaflight, to within 100 samples, which we're running 4,000 samples a second, so in way less than a second. So as soon as you arm, it basically converges on a constant K, and it stays locked on that. If I've asked, and I have a issue request or feature request in Butterflight to produce a debug mode that shows K moving or Q, so on and so forth. Uh, that's yet to been implemented. I think it's been out there at least three or four weeks. So, hey, maybe there's some data there, but I uh, haven't seen anything yet. Even if that does come to show dynamics, it seems like the output result is still just a low pass filter in the actual flight tests because the BQRC is definitely not dynamic. And I just showed how the FKF produces the same results. So. That dynamics isn't really moving or making that much difference if it is true or not. And I don't mean to offend with this one, but I can feel a difference. I'm not going to tell you if you can or can't. What I'm going to say is that you need to consider confirmational bias, and all scientists do this. And if you can't show it in data that what you're feeling is there, then I offer that it's doesn't exist and it's confirmational bias. The fact that when we're 
our, my logs are at 4,000 samples per second. The PID loops are 8,000 or 32,000 depending on those. To say that you can feel something when reaction times are 200 to 250 milliseconds and we're talking about 0.25 milliseconds in sampling rates, that is thousands of orders of magnitude different. And again, to make that claim, that's enough. You better come with some data to 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 try to convince me of it. I just, I think any of these, I'm open to claims that are based in some data. Let's take a look at it. But until then, um, I ask that people don't get mad at me for publishing data and information and reviewing it. And uh, if they have data to refute this or see some uh, massive error in the data collection I've done and, other, and others have done, bring it to the table and we'll have an dis intelligent discussion about it. That's all I ask. The last thing in, in this graphic is me uh, ducking and covering. I hope I don't have to. But when you're comparing these logs, which I hope you do, you do not make a comparison across the jump. You cannot compare the butterfly logs against the beta 32 and then you can't compare you can't compare any of the different ones. You have to compare within that stream. So the butterfly log, so this is the uh, FKF versus BQRC. Then we are making a jump that the BQRC is the same in both firmwares. Then we're looking at the 32K logs, which shows that the BQRC, which we didn't, I didn't review, but it's in the data set. You can go download it. That all the filters that are run on the 32K produce the same result, including the BQRC, which shows that it's the same as the FKF, which shows so on and so forth. Same thing with the Betaflight 8K logs. Those are direct comparison against the, the two. These two were flown on a very windy day. These two were flown on a different day. Same thing. This is actually, these are a different rig. This is somebody else's rig that did the, the 32K log. So you can't, again, I just want to emphasize again, you cannot make comparisons between these or these. The the common thread that we're comparing against and using against all of it is that BQRC F2 filter. So all we need to do is show that something is similar to that and then we can make that hop across. I've thought about that a lot. If there is a reason that can, that cannot be a common thread, I am open to that discussion. But again, don't just say it, show me why. And let's look at the data. I've really done a I'm really trying to stick with the data because it cuts through uh, debates and I don't want to have uh, debates and conversations anymore on this anecdotally. Uh, if we want to have debates and conversations and showing data, let's, let's do that. That's worth my time. In this, I did want to note that we're not talking about the Helio filtering, the IMUF. That's a different thing, a different topic for a different day, different testing, which honestly I have not done to compare. If you've seen other tests that show differences in flight videos and whatnot, I would like you to raise the question of, was that just difference between default PIDs? Did they show any data on what their baseline of their test was and show you the, you know, the actual logs that confirmed that everything was the same going in, not just taking their word for it. I'm not asking you to take my word for any of this. Go look at the data. Okay, so I'll leave you with that. Be gentle. Thanks, and I hope this helped.